It's a dream. In one garage, you keep a 240 mile an hour legend, the McLaren F1. In the other, you've got Ferrari's finest achievement, the Enzo, a combined value approaching two million pounds. Both of these cars are awesome on the track, but we wanted to know what's it like owning and driving them in real life on real roads. And now, for the first time, thanks to a generous fifth gear viewer, we can tell you. Chris Palmer is a self-made man who sees these delicious supercars as investments as much as toys. Probably, for me, they're as good as it gets. The McLaren is probably a bigger adrenaline pump. Um, the Enzo, if anything, is a little bit easier to drive. Insurance? Running costs? <laughs> I don't back horses. So it's, 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 a, it's a vice that can be cheaper than gambling. With the cars back to back, we'll be able to tell you which gives the biggest thrill, which is the most expensive to run, and which drives the best. Come on, this is our Enzo for a day. And the look, there's nothing like this in the supercar world. This is the supercar that looks more like a spaceship than any other. It's just stunning. And the closer you get, the more... I don't know the more you want to open the door. And it just invites you, it beckons you to come. But the contrast is immediate from the stunning exterior to the almost basic functional interior. I mean, look at this hinge, a big alloy chunk of metal that's the door hinge. And I've got windy down windows. No carpet, spend all that money and no carpets, but you don't care because you see things like race and mode set. Then you see start. Then you see a key. Lots of noises. Flip the paddles for N. Perhaps. Press the start button. My heartbeat's just got up about 50 beats. And that is coming through the seat into my back and into my spine, tingling up into my brain. And I haven't even touched the throttle pedal yet. It's a car that gives you goosebumps, but the experience is slightly dampened because you know one day, just like the F40 and F50 before it, the Enzo will be replaced, whereas the F1 will exist forever as the McLaren flagship. Now, this, of course, is a, a race car that's been converted back for use on the road, so it hasn't got all the luxury interior. <laughs> I've just got to remember how to get into a McLaren F1. <laughs> but once inside that brilliant driving position that Gordon Murray created, no beautiful dials in front of me, a race-spec dashboard, and this whole bank of carbon fibre surrounded switches. Time for some noise, well, music to me. Full race bit master switch. Ignition. Fuel pumps on. Now stripped out for race bet, this car has lost like 300 kilos of weight, so it's lost all the sound deadening. So this is not going to be a quiet trickle when you drive the car. In fact, I noticed these headsets, because the only way you can talk to a passenger if you had one is with these. 
hopefully I'll be able to drive without them. Because to listen to that V12 in the back is very special. Ferrari recommend the Enzo is serviced every 3,000 miles or six months, with the bill coming to between two and three thousand pounds. A new set of tyres is about a grand. A 6,000 mile service on a McLaren can cost, and are you sitting down, 30,000 pounds. Everything about an F1 is telephone numbers. Even a small tin of touch-up paint costs 75 quid. Then we come to the petrol station. A day with these two resulted in my record ever fill up. Now, whereas the, uh, the NZ is about 15 miles to the gallon, with the McLaren, you're going to be stopping these fuel stations a bit more often. Because this car and this specification that's about six miles to the gallon. How long is that nose and how near is that concrete? <laughs> the funny thing is I've now done some proper mileage in an Enzo. It's nothing like what I thought it was. It's not an animal at all. It's calm, it's relaxed, it doesn't spur you on. It's a very pleasant cruiser. And I think the reason why you feel so relaxed is the fact that you, you know there's so much extra performance available, you're never going to get anywhere near its limits on the public roads if you don't bother to try. But I guess there's one button I've got to try. And that's the race button. I'm just to see how different it feels, because it does sharpen up the engine and the suspension. So we'll just have it in the rev band three, then just press it and. Oh! The steering is now, yeah, sharpened a tad. The gear change should be a bit quicker. Suddenly, I feel a bit egged on. It's amazing what a difference one button can make. Oh my god, it's got no lock! It's got the racing rack, which is faster, and it's got no lock. <laughs> oh dear. I thought I'd drive this without this headset on, but it is so noisy, especially with the gearbox. In fact, if I didn't have this on, you wouldn't hear me speak. But I have to say, I feel a bit like a, a fighter pilot taking his F-16 down to the shops. This whole car just is saying, let's go, let's go. White circle with black vinyl lines across it, which means we can now go three, two... Screen television in front of you on a PlayStation game. Whoa! <laughs> oh. oh, it's going to get me into trouble. This car is going to get me into trouble. I think these headsets on it makes me feel more like I'm in a racing car. I've got my crash helmet on. I'm in racing mode. I probably need to take them off in order to calm myself down to listen to all that. Oh, oh, oh. To listen to all the noises of the car. Oh, my God. But getting back into McLaren has reminded me what supercars should all be about. And it's all about the driving experience. But most of all, it's just this stunning performance. Because I'm sitting in the most exciting... I say this again, the most exciting road car ever built. You're still the baby. 